Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manish Asad and all those participants in this session. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to 1546th day of continuous and uninterrupted Zoom session of IFPH. Let us start today's program with a silent prayer for one minute. Thank you and welcome back. Today we have with us Dr. Mr. Nishan Jain. CEO B J Group of Company, third generation of B J Group is carrying forward the legacy of dedication and commitment to making lives better, learning and growing every day. We all know that the words are not enough to describe the dedication and what they have done to the homeopathic fraternity. That much of publications and all sorts of support to our profession. So on behalf of IFPH, I welcome you. The topic is quality of consciousness for homeopathic medicine. On behalf of IFPH, please proceed. Nishant, stay in, sir, please. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks a lot for the entire team to give us this opportunity to, to, to present that what we have. Uh, am I audible to everyone? Yes. Out there? yes. Okay, perfect. So so thanks a lot to the, to the IHPF uh, platform whereby we've been you know given an opportunity to discuss about the various uh, procedures that we try to implement in uh, improving and maintaining the quality standards in homeopathy and uh, so thanks a lot for that so as you may be aware that uh, bgen is one of the companies uh, which is supporting and being a part of the homeopathic community for last uh, almost 60 years now, which was started by my grandfather way back in 1967. And uh, with a mere uh, publication of homeopathic books and uh, an effort to make the literature available in the hands of the common man, as well as the students and teachers and the community. So I think that's been the starting off of uh, our journey into homeopathy. And I must tell that it's a, it has been a great experience until now. And we've been, uh, uh, in, you know, we are so privileged and we are so lucky to be a part of this community because I think uh, for so many years, what homeopathy has been, been able to give as a treatment to the mankind with the, with the best of the solutions, with no intervention in surgical level or the, saving the world by not being just contaminated by the you know the, the chemicals and the the side effect journey actually so i'll be very happy to be a part of it to be very honest so if i'll just jump to the I'll, i've got a small presentation to present across that about it talks about our journey into homeopathy i'll just try to bring this on just one moment how do i bring this uh, As you rightly mentioned, 60 years, hundreds of publications without this their work, we might, might not have studied or we may not have enough books, study materials, in fact. Thousands of lakhs, even lakhs of physicians studied the homeopathy, this great science through their work and dedication. So we must salute them. So those who are entering the session kindly Rename yourselves without the device name so that we can identify you. A lot of persons are entering with the device name. They think, think homeopathy, think and thank BJ. We must more modify that. Uh, yeah. So yes. it's about just our, uh, for so many years, I think think homeopathy and think BJ is, uh, it goes in coherence with uh, like we had in our books, if you have the old books that you name it, we have it. So it was uh, just as one of the similar thing that we think homeopathy and think Bijan is what we talk about. The As of now today, it's been, uh, we are working with almost more, more than about 500 employees, uh, which are servicing the homeopathic community through our pharmaceutical publishing software, medical journals, so uh, so that's the size of the team that we are working on with at the moment. Then we have uh, six different verticals within homeopathy, which includes uh, homeopathic book publishing, homeopathic software, homeopathic education, 
Center for Advanced Studies in Homeopathy, Homeopathic Journal. And the latest entrant is uh, the pharmaceutical division, which is merely about 14 years old as of now. And uh, the reach that we have at the moment globally is uh, more than 100 countries that we've been servicing through our products and uh, through our services to the community there. But with all this, I'll just try to take a small, uh, quick thing about, we all know as I'm not there to teach homeopathy, but just want to put some small reminders uh, so that we can, I can start my, the emphasis on what the topic is. As we all know that similia similibus corinter, uh, like cures like, is the basis principle that we've been working on with. And uh, if you remember, Sincona bark, which produces malaria uh, symptoms and has the capacity to cure the same with the higher potency, which was tested by Dr. Samuel Henneman. So this is one of the, the thing, the thing which creates a problem has the potential to cure it in a higher potency. Likewise, we have uh, Rux Tox, which is again a poison ivy, which uh, if, if it comes in contact with the direct skin, it can create allergies, red lines, results in thin. And if you look into the, the repertorial symptom, uh, it can even cure as Rux Tox for red, swollen, niching, intense, vesicles, herpes. So these are common symptoms that uh, Rux Tox can actually help us uh, at the same time. Then when you come down to coffee, cruda as well, one of the very common product being used for sleep uh, to, to if I, for example, if I'm feeling sleepy, though having a shot of a coffee helps me to avoid it. And if the same thing has been used in high potencies can help us to, to uh, cure insomnia as well. So why, if you look into the, the crude which creates a problem when taken in higher doses, creates and solves the so same uh, symptoms. If I look into the core homeopathic existence, when it comes to mother tinctures, which are prepared from such herbs or chemicals or animal sources, which has been diluted in one is to 10 ratio to make a mother tincture, as we all know. And when you see this, same potency taken into a 3x potency of the ratio gets into 1 is to 100. One part of a raw material vis-a-vis -vis 100 parts of the vehicle, which could be a lactose or alcohol. So the percentage of the mother tincture, if you see the orange color on the, on the brown zone, that is the percentage of the crude material. And if you just go through this text, which I'm trying to mention, like uh, for a 30c potency, with 1 is to 100 repeated 30 times, which equals to 10 to the power of 60. A small grain of sand, sand, which we can not even imagine in a normal course of life, being there as uh, with 10 to the power of 60, could be as big as the whole universe, which is not even imaginable that we can see the size of it. And when we are talking about potencies to the size of 1M and CM, the content value is very minimalistic. And that is that is a, one of the major reasons that if we talk about the real content, it goes to a minuscule level, which is not even, which is beyond imagination to trace, which is beyond imagination to, to find out. But what works in homeopathy? Is there a connect? Because when... The, the outer world says it's a pseudoscience. It's not. Why? Because when a coffee cruda can cure the similar principle of insomnia, so definitely it cannot be something which we talk about, which the, the outer world is trying to say, what works in homeopathy? There are two important things which produces a right remedy in higher potencies. First of all, it's a process. And the second is the change in energy. And these are very two important rules that makes any homeopathic remedy different from any other science available in the world today. The process of making the remedy, as we all know, the succussion that we do of the, after diluting, it's very, very important. And the similar way, by doing this succussion, the energy, the kinetic energy changes with every potency raised. So that's the reason the quality of that process 
the quality of that minuscule raw material is very, very important. Many a times when we see there, when we talk about in homeopathy, there are many common remedies. For example, Arnica. Arnica as a remedy can be it just a, it's not just a name because there is a one of the spurious or a, an adulterant available in the market by the name of Arnica Mexicana, which is not same as Arnica Montana. The alkalis of Arnica Mexicana will be totally different from the alkalis available in Arnica Montana, though there will be some alkalis which will be common. So you could imagine that if that is a small percentage which is actually going to be effective how important is the selection of such a raw material? Should we really compromise in taking the right raw material, which is supposed to be used to cure that patient because that small minuscule can be very effective at the same time, it can be detrimental of what the solution is intended to be. At the same time, the process of manufacturing the homeopathic medicine is very, very important. The quality Hence, is one of the biggest backbone for homeopathy and the homeopaths. When we come down to the major principles that what Bijan tries to work on is to maintain the quality, the trust and transparency. There are some of the two important pillars. Why we talk about transparency, if I start with that as a first process. Transparency is something which has been a little not really easily accessible to the end consumer. By end consumer, I mean a patient, a doctor, as well as a researcher. If I talk about as a doctor, am I 100% sure the remedy which I've been using, is it 100% correct? Why? Because if the remedy is does not come with the right source of the manufacturing company, I might be very doubtful that whether the process is being used, the process is being used to manufacture the remedy are good enough. So that's the reason transparency of how did you prepare the medicine is very important. The second thing which, we, which has been the backbone of homeopathy for so many years, for centuries now, is the trust factor. Because we all believe that I believe in a certain company or I believe in a certain source of remedy and I trust that from generations and that's been going on. And that's very important to, to ensure that the trust is maintained and it is taken to the next step from time and again basis. The two important other things which are again important to ensure the right quality method is the consistency of the product. I have to ensure the product which has been prepared right now, it has to be consistently with the similar quality time and again with the batches to come in future. So there is a consistency with every single remedy, with every single batch, so that there is no variance in the product. So that is very important because in today's dynamic world, the, the availability of the raw material can also be challenging. But how do a company ensure with those challenging times, how do you ensure that the consistency has been maintained to make sure that you are not compromising on the quality? And lastly, being a manufacturing company, I think we come by default as a responsibility of making our remedies to be safe to use. Now, as a homeopath, you'll say, what is unsafe to use? A homeopathic remedy. To give you an example, like we all use, we might be using or might be aware about mother tinctures, which is being used in the practice with most of us as a practitioners. The mother tinctures can be prepared through different methods like percolation and maceration. If they've been exposed to the kind of containers, which can be a plastic container, can lead to leaching because of longer usage of alcohol within the drums. And if the plastic leaches, it can become carcinogenic as well. So this is one of the most common things. How can I make sure that if my product is not curing, it should not even harm the patient at the same time. So as homeopaths or as a community, we have to make sure that whatever products we've been giving to the market, they have to have a maintained a quality standards. The procedures that we have to follow, they have to be transparent enough. We have to generate a trust factor within the community and the trust will come with our actions in place. 
the consistency of the product quality, and it has to be safe at the same time. So these are some of the important pillars that BGN as a company has been trying to implement that into its action on regular basis time and again. For example, these are processes like we talk about, you could see like the first image whereby the dilutions which are prepared, we are preparing that I'll quickly go through uh, the process of dilution. Now, if I, as a homeopath, what has been happening until now and what we realized of our so many years of dedication and availability into homeopathy, we got a lot of experience for a lot of stalwarts in homeopathic market. And the biggest experience which came up to us, like Dr. D.P. Rastogi, uh, Lord, late Dr. D.P. Rastogi, he's a very big senior mentor, which I started my career with. I, I, uh, I've traveled along with him a couple of times. At the same time, with a lot of other homeopaths like Dr. Farooq Master or Dr. Frederick Shoins or Dr. M.K. Sahani. And the, the, there's so many other doctors who have given their immense knowledge and experience that what is the biggest challenging point of preparing, a, of using a homeopathic medicine. And when I come to a common crux of it, the biggest problem is about the transparency and the trust factor which a dilution might lack in majority of the homeopathic manufacturing company. Like, for example, as of date today, there are more than 350 manufacturers available in the homeopathic market in India right now. But as a homeopath, I only trust one or two companies by for using my dilution. Why is that so? Because maybe my mentors, my seniors, my friends or my colleagues would have guided me to use a certain company which brings a lot of confidence for me to use based on the trust factor which has been imbibed by my mentors there in the practice for so many years. But at the same time, when we talk to majority of the homeopathic doctors across the globe, to my experience of so many years into homeopathic market as well, a very good practitioner might have a success rate of not more than 70%, which means if 100 patients are coming to you, maybe 70% of the patients are getting cured and 30% might not even turn up or we are not really aware about it. And the biggest reason we try to comprehend to it, maybe the patient did not give enough symptoms to me to diagnose in the right manner, or I was not able to identify the right symptoms in the right place, or maybe the, the potency was not right. We try to convince ourselves with so many answers, which are not justified enough to have a valid reasoning to not get a proper cure for any symptom or disease. At the same time, there could be a possibility, which has got a higher chances that the remedy was not coming with the right source as well. And this becomes one of the biggest challenge for us to see to it that how do we ensure the source of the remedy which we are preparing comes from the right source. Because it's in the last 300 years of the existence of homeopathy, we have all used the back potency from the existing manufacturer. I hope we all understand the, the meaning of a back potency, which means basically when we talk about a back potency, if I have to use a 30 potency, I would procure a 29C from an existing manufacturer or a 199C or 999C to prepare my homeopathic dilution. When it comes like that, what happens with a certain amount of trust factor we believe in, in the supplier to us, there is no 100% guarantee that that dilution of 29C or 199C is 100% correct. If I remove the label, I have no way to identify whether that dilution was actually a 30 potency of or 29 potency of a pulsatilla or arnica. I can only trust because it comes from a reliable source. So this is what has happened that from companies to companies, companies to companies, Everyone has taken a back potency from an existing manufacturer and prepared their own dilutions to make that solution to my patient as one of the possible remedies. And that could be one of the major reasons that why 70% of our cases might be successful and 30% might be failure as well. Because every single dilution of every single company 
in every single potency is not effective. And the reason behind that is because they have been sourced from a simpler or a, a back potency which cannot be traced with any origin. So we as Bijan, what did we do 12 years back or 14 years back? As a company, we decided that if I'm going to prepare my dilution, I will start from the scratch, which is a mother tincture or a herb will be procured, which can be tested at any laboratory. We can have the insurance. If I'm talking about Ruxtox as, as common remedy as Ruxtox or Berberis or as unique remedy, maybe a Bufurana or a, Bel uh, a Boldo and so on. So basically there could be smaller remedies or bigger remedies. We have tried to source the raw material and which can be tested in any laboratory anywhere in the world and which ensures that my raw material is correct. And if my raw material is correct, I can be 100% assured that my product, which I'm using at the moment, the, the remedy which is going to be used is going to be at least with the right raw material, which can be traced back to the origin. The second thing which comes in play is about the, the, uh, the process being used to, to manufacture the remedy. The process by which I mean is uh, the dilution. If they are talking about a one in, in the centesimal potency, just one second. Yes. What's this? Yeah, the dilution, the process which is being used as a centesimal potency within this. 1 is to 99 ratio has to be maintained. And we've been using a potentizer which comes from Belgium, which is one of the most precise machinery available to ensure the validation of every single potency prepared with a G-Force 20 of a consistent force of G-Force 20 being given for every single potency. And that consistency ensures that my potency are raised with the right pressure, with the right process so that I'm 100% sure my every single dilution in every single potency is effective. So this is one of the smallest of the step that we could do to ensure that what we've been following on, we've been trying to ensure that there is a validation, there is a documentation, there is a proof of what's been manufactured with the authentication of the raw material being used in it. Coming to the next step, for example, the raw material, the kind of the common adulterants which happens, for example, calendula as one of the most common herb, which is easily available in homeopathy. Maybe you are aware or not aware. I'll just like to highlight few of the important problems that which are there in our homeopathic system at the same time, which we as manufacturers sometimes try to bypass to ensure that at least are we giving the right product because there is no testing possible at the final dilution. Some companies tend to bypass the regular norms of preparing the right homeopathic medicine. For example, calendula is one of the most common herbs being used. The first adulterant available is a marigold plant. Gendega fool is not calendula. However, it comes from the same family, but the product which was proven was a calendula flower. It was never a Gandaka fool. At the same time, most of the companies in the homeopathic manufacturing companies, they use whole plant as the source of herb to prepare a mother tincture. Whereas when we talk about HPI, which is homeopathic pharmacopoeia of India, talks about the fresh flowering tops and leaves as the source to prepare the mother tincture. Now you would say, what is the difference in using a flower or as a plant. It's a big difference in terms of commercial benefits for many companies. The commercial benefit comes up is because when you talk about the whole flower, which includes the flower, which includes the stem, which includes the roots, which includes the leaves, bark, everything, it comes as mere as about 150 rupees a kilo. And when you talk about the flower only, that is available for less than, not less than 500 rupees a kilo. So you're talking about three times the more expensive source being used just with the simplest of the product, which is being used for the mother tinctures. That is the reason with many companies, a calendula, like a simple flower, which is easily available, people tend to bypass 
the right norms of the right product being used there. Similarly, when you talk about the process of mother tinctures, many companies, they tend to use a plastic container. The plastic container, as we know, that it might lead to leaching problems. And leaching problems with alcohol can extract the polymers and can make the same mother tincture carcinogenic as well. So in order to ensure, like at BGN, we use the stainless steel containers for all the mother tinctures being prepared. No plastic product is being used to ensure the product remains unaffected about the material being used to prepare the medicine. And at least we are sure about using the right product with the right containers or right machinery, right processes to make sure that my product has to be effective if I'm using the right raw material and the product has to be good if I'm using the right containers or right processes to manufacture the same product. At the same time, at BGEN, like for mother tinctures, we do the aging for the mother tinctures as well. This is one, on, one of the added feature which has not been prescribed by the pharmacopoeia norm, but this is an added advantage we try to bring within our manufacturing practices, which enhances the quality of the same mother tincture by doing the aging process, which increases the total solids in my mother tinctures, which increases the pH level as well as within the permissible limits. But at the same time, it ensures the product is much more effective and much more longer lasting for my consumers and my patients at the same time. So coming down to these are the simplest of the processes that we try to work on. Like we talk about the dilutions and the mother tinctures. The third most important aspect that we try to bring on is within the tablets as well. When com coming to the tablets, the process of manufacturing is the trituration. The, the container being used with the trituration, we use a mortar and pestle, which is a traditional chini mitti, agar aapne suna ho. it's a similar porcelain mortar being used to prepare the tablet manufacturing products so that the product, the, the, the jar itself is breathable. When you do the trituration of the lactose, we use the Hanumanian principle of one hour of trituration, which in, uh, energizes, again, creating a kinetic energy within my product, at least to make it effective. Like we all know with a pharmacist, if you talk for him, mixing and trituration is the same thing. But we as homeopaths know the sanctity of a trituration. Up, I'll just give you a small example. I don't know if you can relate this to your common product being used in our daily homeware. Have you all heard about uh, Podine ka chutney at certain areas? Uh, a green Podine ka chutney, maybe we have seen in daily household, we be, might be using that on a regular basis. If I talk about this Podine ka chutney, if you use the same mixture and put that in a mixture bowl, you will have a certain color. But the same mixture being used in a silbatta, it will have a different essence, it will have a different color, it will have a different taste. And it's one of the very common examples of what a trituration and mixing is going to be. We are creating that energy in making the right medicine. That trituration process, sometimes many people tend to bypass this system of not triturating by for one hour as the lactose. And when we do that, at least we are potentizing every single step, every single remedy. And that's the reason every single biochemic, unfortunately in India, biochemic has been used as a supplement remedy. But a biochemic should have the potential to cure the patient as an individual drug itself. If it's been triturated well, if it's been pro produced well, homeopathically, it should have the potential to resolve and to solve the basic symptoms it is meant to be. So this is what we try to create the tablets through having a right processes by following the right Hanumanian principles in place to make the right biochemic remedies as well. Coming down to that house, it's like why Bijan has been trying to put in these important steps within homeopathy as a part of the manufacturing because there is a decades of commitment to the homeopathic community. For us, 
homeopathy has been it has given so much to us in last so many years so it is our chance to give it back to the community by preparing the right remedy which is meant to be at least to keep that trust the name of the brand with that positioning we are trying to match up to the standard so it becomes a lot of responsibility for us to make sure that what we've been con contributing to homeopathy for so many years we should be able to deliver that through our producing of the medicines as well at the same time what we try to do is we try to be transparent in every single step of production and this is a very very important point that whatever steps we try to follow we have been manufacturing right from the sourcing of the raw material to testing of the raw material to storage of the raw material the dispensing of raw material to the manufacturing processes which goes through different machineries on everyday basis with the time log with the person who's manufacturing it every single step is documented and it helps in tracing back that if there is a step which has been bypassed we can trace back to its origin as well so that the because we have been starting as a fresh in last 14 years we have been able to implement the modern standards which were lacking in homeopathy way back in 300 years back for example like carcinogen being used carcinosin being used as a remedy we don't even know the exact source of the remedy because at that time when the proving was done maybe the enough methods were not there enough equipments were not there enough testing methods were not there but we have the results and we've been using it but the reason if we have a we would have had a proper documentation of the source of the remedy with a validation of the processes being used to manufacture the remedy the validation process of giving the clinical trials of that remedy could have given a bigger acceptance to the homeopathic world which it lacks at a mass level at the moment so i think this documentation is very very important which we believe as manufacturing companies should put a lot of efforts in being transparent in the way we work then we talk about the raw material which are being used we try to source and we've been sourcing it from the reliable vendors all the vendors been they have to be verified then only the quality standards can be matched and they have to be uh, ensured that they are giving that consistent quality time and again then we talk about a cgmp norm by cgmp norm we mean current good manufacturing practices it's very important by good manufacturing practices we means a manufacturing company has to follow the certain norms which have been derived by the pharmaceutical committee community to make sure that we are following the right procedures of traceability but with the adding of the c word as a prefix to G gmp means we are talking about current good manufacturing practices every day the world is changing every day the needs are changing every day the, the processes are changing so you have to adapt to those changes and make sure that your good manufacturing practices has to be to the current situation it cannot be outdated i cannot say that i took a gmp about 5 years back and i'm still following the same norm because every day you might have new processes in place every day you might have new machineries in place new systems in place but those have to be adapted to the homeopathic principle they have to be adapted to the current way of manufacturing so it's very important to have the cgmp in place then we talk about the clean rooms and separate man and material entry the way we manufacture the remedies within our manufacturing facility we have clean room environments by if i would try to explain you about the clean rooms by clean room we mean the environment the infrastructure the manpower they have to be clean before they enter the room by environment like the air which comes in it comes through the ahu air handling units and hepa filters which ensures the class of the air has to be filtered so that there is no minimal there is no foreign particle coming in my manufacturing processes the man and the material the raw material which ent enters the manufacturing facility it enters from the different uh, door and the man enters from the different door so that there is no contamination between the two 
the manpower which enters they have to be properly gowned so that there is no contamination again from the outside world so with the clean room the air the water the environment the man every single thing comes after cleaning and ensuring the proper standards are maintained to manufacture to pack and to seal the product within that environment the water system being used in the manufacturing facility we use the demineralized water plant the uv filtration plant and it is in a 24 hour circulation it is very important by 24 hour circulation i mean the water moves in the loop within the factory every now and then for 24 hours continuously for example if i go to the plant i switch off the electricity i come back in the morning nine o'clock from six o'clock in the evening until nine o'clock in the morning in high summer there are chances of getting the microbial growth within the water stagnant in the pipes in order to ensure that the water does not get microbial contaminated the water has to be in circulation 24 hours so that there is no stagnation of the water as we all know like the river water is always fresh to use but a lake water is never fresh to use so this is a very simple step which is being used to ensure that even the water which has been there used in the manufacturing facility has to be within 24 hour circulation throughout. And we are the probably the only few companies who are following this norm to ensure that the water even being used has to be clean enough to within the manufacturing facility. We've got independent quality assurance and quality control department. A quality assurance department ensures a pre-production and a post-production analysis. They make the steps and the procedures which needs to be followed while manufacturing a product. At the same time, the quality control only checks the product, final product and the raw material stage. They don't have this say in making the procedure, but the quality assurance department ensures to make the procedures which should be followed in the manufacturing practices being followed in the manufacturing in the company. Then there's a meticulous recording being taken. Every single thing has been recorded to have the traceability. It's again, very, very important. The traceability for every single batch. For example, a product produced at BJN has a record for more than 50 pages for each batch. It can go from 30 pages to 50 pages for one batch which is like a Janam Patri, which is like just a, a, a document or like a, a, a source that you can trace every single step of manufacturing for that particular batch within the manufacturing facility. That what raw material was used, when was it produced, who produced it, which machinery was used to produce it, what was the procedure being followed to produce it, what was the result of the product, and we keep a control sample for every single product till the date of its shelf life. For example, a shelf life of a product is five years. So we will maintain a control sample of five years plus two years to ensure that the product is effectively working in the market, which has been intended for that shelf life in the market there. So these are different things which are being followed, like the testings is being done at the entry processes and finished goods at all steps throughout. When we talk about the core principles of homeopathy, this, this was the, the pharmaceutical norm which we have tried to implement with the core of the homeopathic principle. So we are trying to amalgamate the both the important norms of having the right procedures of homeopathy mixing with the documentation and proper procedures of the pharmaceutical world so that we are able to give a right answer to the pharmaceutical companies to make sure that the procedures are being followed in the right spirit. Like in mother tinctures, we follow the traditional methods of maceration, percolation, aging, and ensuring the right herb being used. Dilution, we are making our own back potencies to ensure there's a backtracking for every single dilution prepared with us with an accuracy of more than 99.6% and there is no chances of manual errors. Trituration, the right Hanumanian principle of triturating every single potency for one hour is being used to prepare the medicine accordingly. How can 
the quality be uncompromisable, uncom then the traceability and the transparency. When we talk about this, the answer, like the biggest challenge that we see now is homeopathy is being challenged with a lot of other sciences. That homeopathy does not have a scientific backing. It does not have a evidence. It's a pseudoscience. There is, these all fakes can be, these claims can easily be settled down and we can really answer them back by having a proper documentation by having a validation to every single procedure we follow, by having the proper transparency and traceability of every single source raw material being used, at the same time by having the proper clinical trials as well to invest that as a manufacturing companies to ensure that the homeopathy has been able to give an answer to the community back there. So these are some important things as manufacturers, we should ensure that we are able to do that with the right spirit for sure, to have that existence, to have that place in the world, we can certainly have this answer back to the allopathic or the other communities out there. For example, I'll just quickly go through for some of the small little videos about the mother tinctures process being followed. Just, just you know, not going to take a lot of time. Other tinctures are the essence of homeopathic drugs. They are the active ingredients of drug sources extracted in alcohol through processes defined clearly in homeopathic pharmacopias. They are the base of homeopathy and at BGEN, 100% checks are applied at all levels of production to obtain the purest quality of mother tinctures. Let's see how the best homeopathic tinctures are made. Getting the correct herb raw material is of primary importance in the production of mother tinctures. Quality checks assure identification of correct herbs while adulterants or spurious herbs are rejected at the very first step. After selection, the herbs are cleaned and sent for maceration or percolation. Best in quality 316 grade stainless steel containers are used for maceration as they have excellent corrosion resistance and are best for wet applications like mother tinctures. The maceration is carried out for 21 days with regular stirring. All steps are recorded to assure back tracing whenever required. The macerate is then subjected to hydraulic pressure to ensure maximum extraction of phytochemicals. This extract is filtered and kept for aging, unstirred and unmoved for days. Aging allows maximum sedimentation resulting in clear and refined mother tinctures. After a final filtration, the tincture is ready. But wait, this tincture needs to be testified on the parameters of homeopathic pharmacopoeia to get a final nod from QC. If it clears all the parameters, we get the best homeopathic tincture ready to be used for cures. These results are also matched with international standards. If the standards are lacking or outdated, BGEN develops its own in-house standards for future references to assure consistent quality time and again. This way, we at BGN Pharmaceuticals make the best homeopathic tinctures from the best sources. Dilutions are the main instruments of homeopathy and their competence depends on the traceability of their sources. At BGEN, we assure to use authentic herbs for making tinctures and we raise our own back potencies from them so that the traceability factor remains valid whenever required. Let's see how we make best dilutions at BGEN. Exact proportion of drug to vehicle is taken through calibrated pipettes. 
only grain based extra neutral alcohol is used as vehicle for dilutions the next important step is accurate methods of potentization manual potentization is the best process for making dilutions but when thousands of dilutions are prepared manual potentization can be erroneous to assure accuracy of procedure bgen invested in the latest ktronic potentizer an automated machine made by lefortix a belgian company which gives a precision of 99.6% in raising potencies the back potencies prepared by ketronic are stored in ideal temperature conditions and are used as a source for further potencies for scarce raw material well documented back potencies are imported only from reliable european sources for final potency the dynamite machine is used or a well built man gives 10 downward strokes with a uniform force by hand this final potency is carefully labeled packed and released for sale bgen offers a comprehensive list of homeopathic dilutions ranging from 3x to cm we have a wide range of lm potencies starting from 0 by 1 to 0 by 30 available in a pack size of 6 g bgen liquid dilution come in 10 ml 30 ml 100 ml and 450 ml pack size so i think this is a uh, major late i'm open for the queries or the questions if there are any and yes yeah congratulations nice presentation in fact much needed to the homeopathy practitioners as well as the lovers of homeopathy as well as students it's time for discussion those who like to participate please raise your hand and you can ask us some questions or can add something there was a couple of questions in the chat box i think early up what happens when we give mother tinctures in plastic bottle to patients sir when we give mother tinctures in plastic bottle it's certainly not recommended especially when the alcohol percentage is higher so as i mentioned the alcohol tends to uh, leach the plastic polymer so so yes. certainly it's not recommended with the products having an alcohol percentage to yes. give it to the final product Yes, another uh, solution. I think amber color glass bottles are a better choice for dispensing. What is your opinion? Ah, uh, certainly, amber color has got a specific reasoning behind it. Why? Because ah, uh, with amber color, it the 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 sun rays which is open in the market, they don't get into the they don't harm the ultraviolet rays. They don't harm the quality of the raw material or the medicine being used. so certainly yes. the amber color obstructs the sun rays the uv rays to maintain the quality standards uh, uh, of the product being used there i think there is another point to be uh, uh, to be uh, noted that while transporting the work, the medicines is prone to uh, have got a lot of shaking that may change the potency it was the uh, concern of dr samuel henime to transportation A slight potency variation of how it happens. I think so. If so, we have to transport the medicine by the the the, the, the medical pellets. That may be a good option. But so that can be certainly be an option. But at the same time, in dilution, there are two processes important which raises the potency. First, you have to dilute and then succussion. Yes. By transport mere, it is not getting diluted. It is maintaining the similar percentage of the potency being there. it's only you are increasing energizing the same potency so you are not increasing the medicine but you are maintaining though the research has to be done i'm not an expert from the physics background to do the research but according to my understanding i think diluting and succussion these are two both important methods to raise the potency this so is one will not be enough samuel henryman not myself just i i sir i'm uh, i i do yes. apologies i understand that certainly we have to be sure about it that how we can ensure it but yes. uh, certainly a great idea that it can be medicatedly pills is certainly a solution which can be used for uh, 
the, the, the standardization can be effective through that way, I think. In the coming days, that will be more effective. Then you mentioned about the transparency, quality, consistency, trust, and safety. Well, these are the main concern. Then about the back potency as well as different species, they'll often. Then again, a master advises to use the original species of plants, where with, the, with, with that, the proving is done. Right. The Palsatla, all these things from Germany or America, the, the America they may give the, the exact results of the material medica. Because right. not from the quality, but there may be some changes in the original plant. That is the reason. Agreed, sir. That is certainly, I think, uh, there's a big need for reproving the remedies because I think that even the environment changes in the social and the, the mental behavior of the patient has also changed in so many years. So I think yeah. all this is very important, a big call for uh, the community as well to look forward to do the uh, the reproving for some important remedies to start with. And we will be also open to be and part of such a activity if any of the homeopathic community wants to do it. We will be more than happy to support certain, such an activity to ensure the remedies to be effective even in right now in today's world. For example, to give you uh, the smallest of the bit, like Hekla Lava. The, the time the Hekla Lava was proven, the, the medicine it was from the Mount Hekla in Iceland. Yeah. And the lava material is nowhere available as of date today from, yeah. from Mount Hekla. But there have been N number of products available in the market right now with the Hekla Lava potency up there. How yes. are the companies bringing that raw material? How are they manufacturing it? How are they producing it? There is uh, no uh, traceability of the same. So it's a big problem. So I think, yeah, maybe the lava is being used, which requires for a new proving and new uh, symptoms to be derived from it. But it cannot be called as Mount Hekla's Hekla lava at the same time. Yes. Another so the suggestion is better result by dilution directly on the tongue or with water and spoon. Sir, I would not be an expert to give an yeah, answer on this. I think the homeopathic doctors will be able to do it. It's, Definitely. Uh, Our yeah. master advice is dry upon tongue is the most suitable method to administer medicine when there is a, a situation of emergency you can give it dissolved in water. Not directly to tongue. It is, it is not at all advised by our masters. Is that okay? Any, any suggestions or questions you can ask? Then you mentioned about an important aspect of this parts of medicines used. It yes. is the, the, the flowering plant or the root or the these are very important as far as the medicine is concerned. Moreover, the potentized medicine when you use it will make a big difference, I think. Right. If, if it is crude medicine, there may be minimum difference, but as the potency advances, definitely there will be more change. To yeah. give you an example, like I was talking about Arnica Montana and Arnica yes. Mexicana. Yeah. Like Arnica Montana, it comes from the European origin. Yeah. And it is grown in the lower plains and the colder climate. And the herb is widely available in the European area. Yeah. But it's a, it's an expensive herb to which comes to a tune of more than about four to five thousand rupees a kilo. Yeah. But unfortunately, there was one of the herb supplier who brought Arnica Mexicana from Mexico. And that is available at one tenth of the cost. And the try the thing they try to do is they name the product as Arnica M on the invoices. And 99% of the homeopathic companies, they're happy using a Arnica M instead of Arnica Montana. And that is the reason that probably some alkalis of Arnica are there in both of the products. But it's the biggest adulterant available in the market and people are using it happily. Yes. So I think it is a, a big important thing as we as manufacturers should take the responsibility of making the right product to, because the doctors cannot test every now and then, but it is our responsibility as manufacturers to ensure that we're giving the right product to the doctor there. Yes. In fact, uh, the, this Arnica Mountana Mount is the broad medicine. But yeah. Is not broad, so that, that may be the reason. Then another important thing is that in some, some uh, times, some uh, these insects may uh, lay eggs to the, this uh, buds. So yeah. naturally, when the proving that the, the using the patient will get some symptoms of candidiasis. 
the can there is fly yeah. yes there is another complication in that so a lot of uh, hurdles are there so we must be uh, cautious about that but all these things happens when the physician is a good observer as well as he prescribe not a drug not a medicine but he pr we prescribe a remedy that would be a big difference dr exactly. ram parveshra one of the experienced hand in the cfph sir what is your opinion as well as you can make your comments as well as what of thanks to mr nishan jai yes sir please thank you dr manoj ji and congratulations dr nishan ji he then publish <laughs> publication knowledgeable session excellent session and according to pharmacopoeia and pharmacy <laughs> plastic bottle kaat bottle kaat bottle is the best action of homeopathic medicine so, very very thanks nishan ji behalf of ifth whole team very very thanks thank you Thank you. <clears throat> yes. With that, let me conclude today's English edition. Hope you that will be back again tomorrow. Till then, goodbye. And I am appealing you to Dr. Mr. Nishant. You must support the research activities. Without the private participation, it will not work. What the allopathic pharma companies are doing, or propelling, or propagating all these things by funding. Similar fashion must be developed in homeopathy to establish in a more uh, acceptable way. It is, uh, in fact, we are always doing the genuine work, but not all accept because of the lack of money or publications or the this uh, promotions. On behalf of IFP, thanks for saying thanks once again. Back again tomorrow. Till then, goodbye. And now, Dr. Mariama, you want to continue the program in Malayalam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.